I'd like to welcome everyone out to our service today. Um, okay, I always say, you know, no matter how many times you sit down in the pews, as soon as you get up here, you forget exactly how everything goes. Um, so I, I've got my bulletin here telling me all this. I've got this other sign right here. I've got the, the reading here. Um, okay, so we went through the hymn saying. Um, okay. Um, if you could, in your pews, the, the red uh, placard there with the attendance, if you could uh, register yourself and pass that down the aisle. Um, at this time, if you could fill out any prayer cards, and those will be uh, collected during the offering. Um, do we have any announcements? Karin? Do we have volume? Thank you. Bringing my prop. Get ready. Vacation Bible School is coming. This is the theme this year, Hero Hotline, Call Together to Serve God. We have excited volunteers that are ready to teach and do games and crafts and yummy snacks, and uh, we have some children signed up already, but we have room for more. So join us. It's uh, August 14th, and we have two weeks to do the detailed planning and to get excited, and um, Patty's going to do the music. So that's a reason by, all by itself to come sing with us. So um, sign up and get ready. Do we have any other announcements? Um, do we have any birthdays or anniversaries? Yes. Husband's birthday is today, you said 82? Don. Daughter on August 1st. Oldest grandson, 41, I did not catch the name, on August 2nd. I'm surprised I could remember that much. <laughs> Any, yes, Sally. Ashley is 33 on the 1st. Anyone else? If we could sing happy birthday. Happy birthday. And at this, at this time, we will pass the peace, and if I remember, we're back to normal. Well, people around. Okay. So, <laughs> so, so we, we are a limited mobility um, passing of the peace. So if everybody could rise and pass the peace with your immediate neighbors um, and share the love of Christ. So I neglected to ask if we had any first-time visitors today. If you could just raise your hand. Yes.
Yes, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Our call to worship is Psalm 105, verses 1 through 11. Uh, you can find that in your hymnal on page 828. If you could please rise if you're able. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, call on God's name, make known God's deeds among the peoples. Sing to the Lord, sing, sing praises, praise. tell of God's wonderful works. Glory in God's holy name, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord in his strength, seek the Lord's continually. Remember the wonderful works God has done, the miracles and judgments. God has uttered. The Lord is our God, whose judgments are in all the earth. The covenant made with Abraham, his promise sworn to Isaac, and confirmed to Jacob as a statute, to Israel as an everlasting covenant, saying, To you I will give the land of Canaan, as your portion for an inheritance. They who wait for the Lord shall Our opening hymn is hymn 103, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise.
Please join me in the prayer of confession as printed in your bulletin. We confess, O God, that we do not look for your kingdom to be at hand. We are still waiting. We confess that at times we are wanting a kingdom that doesn't look much different than the world we are in, except in that vision we have all the power and possessions we desire. We confess that we are making the kingdom of God in our own image, and it is still very much like a worldly kingdom. Forgive us for not abandoning the ways of this world so we might hunt for your reign like a hidden treasure field. Forgive us for not letting go of the possessions and greed and privilege that holds us back from seeking you like a great pearl. Forgive us for not planting the seeds of your kingdom. Forgive us for our foolish ways. Call us into your ways of love, restoration, and reconciliation in the name of Christ, who laid down his life and all the world's foolishness for your eternal love, and who offers us this eternal life. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate you from God's love. You are forgiven. You are loved. You are restored. Go share the good news. Amen. Our first scripture reading is from the book of Matthew, chapter 13, uh, verses 31 through 33, and then also verses 44 through 52. And you can find that in your New, your, uh, New Testament in the pews on page 14. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and reburied. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So so it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. 
Have you understood all this? They answered, Yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has become a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out his treasure, what is new and what is old.
invite the children to come forward? We have a couple. Good morning, children of God. Okay, good to see you. I know we have some friends away on vacation, and we have some friends visiting. I always like when you come, so welcome. So does anybody know what these things are? These are mustard seeds. Tiny they are. So I told that from this little tiny seed, a, a tree can, can come out. So, uh, well, maybe not so much a tree as more of a like bush, and, but so big that even birds can come in and sit with them. And Jesus told his friends that he used the mustard seed and he said, how can I think about God and God's love and God's kingdom. And he said, it's like a mustard seed, which is so, so tiny. Like if I drop this, I don't think we'd be able to find it on the, on the carpet. But when it's planted, it brings forth big plant. And that's what God's love and God's kingdom, they call it, is all about. It starts with something very tiny, and then it keeps growing. Do you remember, I don't know, I'm assuming that from your um, Sunday school, sorry to put you on the spot, Michael, how many disciples were there in the beginning? Twelve. So Jesus had just 12 regular old guys. Some were fishermen, some were uh, tax collectors. And they, so just with 12 people, Jesus started. And now look, just in our one church, there's way more than 12 people. And we're just one church. So that tells you how you can start with something very tiny, like tiny little seed, and grow into something very big. So it's, it's up to us, though, to keep sharing God's love with, with other people and to invite them. So I don't know if you heard uh, Ms. Karn in the beginning of the service talked about Vacation Bible School. So that's coming up in a couple weeks. And that's a perfect time to invite a friend to come to church and to experience what it means to be a part of our church family here. So when, when you go, I'm going to give you a little bookmark and a mustard seed in here. And you can decide. There's a little place you can put your mustard seed on if you want to grow, um, if you want to glue it on there. Or if you want to try to grow a mustard plant, you can, can put it in some soil. I was thinking of trying that myself. I've never done that before. Can we say a prayer together? Dear God, thank you for your stories that help to teach us. Just like the mustard seed, Help us to share with others God's good kingdom and share your love with all we meet. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you, guys. So you're going to go with Lori to Junior Church, and I'm going to give you that book that and there we go and I invite everyone else to stand as we sing together seek ye first number 405 
Please be seated. Here now our scripture from the book of Genesis, verse, chapter 29, verses 15 to 28. Then Laban said to Jacob, Because you are my kinsman, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me, what shall your wages be? Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were dull, but Rachel was graceful and beautiful. Jacob loved Rachel, so he said, I will serve you seven years for your younger daughter, Rachel. Laban said, it is better that I give her to you than I should give her to any other man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because of his love for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife, that I may go into her, for my time is completed. So Laban gathered together all the people of the place and made a feast. But in the evening, he took his daughter Leah and brought her to Jacob, and he went in to her. Laban gave his maid Zelpha to his daughter Leah to be her maid. When morning came, it was Leah. And Jacob said to Laban, what is this you have done to me? Did I not serve you for Rachel? Why then have you deceived me? Laban said, This is not done in our country, giving the younger before the firstborn. Complete the week of this one, and we will give you the other also in return for serving me another seven years. Jacob did so and completed her week. Then Laban gave him his daughter Rachel as a wife. This is the word of, God, of the Lord. Let us pray. Oh God, we come to you this morning seeking you. We come to you seeking to hear your word. Oh God, may our faith be like a mustard seed, so that although we may have doubts and we may have questions, we still might follow you, and may good fruit bloom from within us so that others might be touched and brought to you. In your name we pray, amen. So we continue the soap opera that is the beginning of Genesis. This story about our four fathers and mothers. I invite you to remember that we're thinking about ancient Israel and its customs, and although there continue to be many things in these passages which are real head-scratchers for us, there is good news also. Clearly, the ancient marriage customs do not fit our modern-day customs, and sometimes I think that makes it hard for us to focus on other things. But let us continue to chew on these stories and consider what God might be saying to us today. Last week, we contemplated the encounter Jacob had with God when he saw the angels descending and ascending on the ladder and where he felt God's presence in a new and powerful way. He has been on his way to his uncle's in order to get away from Esau, his brother, for Jacob had tricked him into giving him his inheritance and tricked his father into a blessing. And so 
In between that story and this one, Jacob sees Rachel at the well as he approaches his uncle Laban's. And it's love at first sight. And then here we hear more about sibling rivalry, but this time it's between the sisters, Leah and Rachel. There's more in the story about how they have had their own struggles in their relationship. So Jacob will do anything to have Rachel as his wife, even work 14 years for it. How funny that the trickster gets tricked here. Some people would say, well, that's divine retribution or karma. I'm not sure that's how God works. Yet God continues to use everyday, normally flawed people to bring about God's plans. In any event, Rachel and Leah are caught between the desires of Jacob and the will of their father. They are basically pawns. This has troubled me a lot as I've processed some of these stories. Did Leah and Rachel have any kind of voice? Was it just because Rachel was pretty? She was the one that was chosen? What we don't know is whether either Rachel or Leah had a say in the matter. We don't know whether Jacob and Rachel had a courtship over those seven years, whether they really got to know one another, whether Leah got to know Jacob, and we just don't know. But what we do know is this is the story of how the covenant will happen. How will God provide land and progeny for Jacob, for the promise he made back to his grandfather Abraham? I think sometimes God makes a plan that we end up making very securitous. But eventually, God's good work comes out. So as the story continues, Laban gives Leah instead of Rachel at the end of the seven-year service. Now, this is another head-scratcher for me. If the rule was that the younger could not marry before the older daughter, why did Laban not make that known to Jacob ahead of time? Again, the trickster is being tricked. So there are a number of questions that this text raises. How did Jacob not know that he was with Leah? After seven years, did he not know the difference between the two women? Maybe he had a little too much fun from the earlier festivities. Was she complicit? Or was she forced to go into that marriage? Did Rachel know? So many questions that I could be asking, that I have been asking, that I'll continue to ask. So after I thought about this, after I did some Google searches, and yes, some praying, one of the things that came to my mind was that all of these stories, going back to Sarah and Hagar, demonstrate the complexity of relationships. So I'm sorry, I don't have a lot of answers, just a lot of questions for you to ponder. If we had the projector, I would put up that emoji with the, you know, thinking like, what does all this mean? Our marriage rules have changed, yes. Our way of going about 
giving people, so to say, in marriage is different. But when people are involved, there's always some type of give and take and negotiating. People's feelings will get hurt. People will be shunned for having dull eyes. And many will feel like they simply do not have a voice. My heart breaks for Leah and how she must have felt being forced onto Jacob, knowing full well he wanted to be married to his sister, to her sister. Yet God did not shun her even when she felt like the rest of the people she loved did. In the next part of the story, God gives Leah children. God had promised Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and these children come through Leah. God's promises through humans can sometimes be messy. Sibling rivalry, heartbreak, births, miscarriages. More is contained in these narratives. In her commentary, Esther Men notes the competition between the two sisters for the affection of their husband and for their children parallels the earlier sibling rivalry between Esau and Jacob for the birthright and blessing. It seems like we continue to go around in circles. Do we not learn from one, one another? How can we disrupt unhealthy relationships? It's not fair is still a phrase many of us have used and real hurts have come about, whether things are intentional or not. So what can we do about it? Where is the good news? Where is the hope? Are we doomed to continue to repeat these types of circles over and over again? Or can we work to break some of these cycles and work on finding our voices and helping other people to claim their voice? Jacob could only see his desire for Rachel, so much so that he could not even see Leah when she was even in her bed. By the way, I'm so glad God put it on Gail's heart to provide junior church to the kiddos, as she likes to call them this summer, because some of these stories are not ones I'd be wanting to process with children here in the pews. I wonder whether there are situations and relationships in which we are unaware of our own selfishness, where we use people, where people get wounded, as Leah was. I think sometimes these stories in the Bible are to show us, as I said a couple weeks ago, what not to do. I think we always think, well, if it's in there, that's what we should be doing. But maybe if it's in there, it's for us to discuss and to figure out and to see how might we be even better followers. I wonder whether we've dismissed people or sanctified our own treachery when we've discounted other people. And I haven't even mentioned the enslaved women, Zelpha and Bilpha, who were the handmaidens to Leah and Rachel. Talk about not having a voice. We might not pay dowries anymore, but I think we sometimes do make people pay for things that they do that upset us in order to get even with them, even if we don't do it on a conscious level. 
So after wrestling with all of this and wondering how in the world could I give a good word of hope, I went back to the gospel and the Romans passage. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. We hold the potential within each of us to right wrongs, to help those who have been hurt, to work for justice so that women are not used or tossed aside. That mustard seed is in each of us. And when we seek the Lord first, before we engage our human minds, we are able to either stop that hurt from happening or finding a way to make it better. Furthermore, although we did not read the full letter that Paul wrote to the Romans, while he was in prison, I might add, which was part of the lectionary for today, we did read some of it as the words of assurance. But I would like to share with you two of the final verses. I love the way the message interpretation puts Romans 8, verses 38 and 39. And I think this is what we can hold on to as we contemplate these challenging texts. Paul says, do you think anyone is going to be able to drive a wedge between us and Christ's love for us? There is no way. Not trouble, not hard times, not hatred, not hunger, not homelessness, not bullying threats, not backstabbing, not even the worst sins listed in Scripture. None of this phases us because Jesus loves us. I'm absolutely convinced that nothing, nothing living or dead, angelic or demonic, today or tomorrow, high or low, thinkable or unthinkable, absolutely nothing can get between us and God's love because of the way that Jesus our master has embraced us. People may use us. We may use people. People may hurt us. We may hurt people. People may shun us. We may shun people. But Jesus will not forsake us and will work through the messiness and the dysfunction in order to bring about the kingdom of God. Even when you do not feel like you have a voice, tap into the good news. Tap into that mustard seed. And know that God can bring forth good things. And if you need a reminder, I've got lots of mustard seeds to share. Amen. Amen. So as we think about what can we give to God, remember that it's not just our monetary offerings that God asks for us, but it is our time, our presence, our prayers, So I invite you to continue to think about the ways that God has called you to be part of sowing the seeds of God's good love. Let us receive our morning offering.
Let us pray. God of all blessings, Jesus inspired us through his teaching to see your kingdom as a place where small things can have a mighty impact. A tiny mustard seed planted or a bit of yeast mixed into the flour. We ask you this day to bless the gifts we offer so that they may have a powerful impact when used according to your purposes. Bless us that we might see glimpses of your kingdom through our giving and grow in generosity in the process. In the name of Jesus, our Savior and Redeemer, we pray. Amen. for the air conditioning that made it uh, even more comfortable. Uh, and the beauty that today it's cooler and we can have the windows open. Let us pray. God of surprising love, you have called us to be your treasures, which sometimes baffles us, O oh God, because we do not feel like we have anything to give. O oh God, but you have placed within us love and grace. You have given us spirit, spirits of helping, of caring, of compassion. O oh God, we thank you for the story that Jesus shares, oh God, things like how we are like mustard seeds, how we could grow to create shelter for those who feel abandoned, just like the birds found shelter in the mustard plant. Oh God, we are thankful for your first disciples who went out and fished for people. Help us to continue to do that, that we might go forth sharing in places that are in such desperate need. Oh God, we bring forth to you this day the people and situations that are in need of healing. We lift up to you all those who are traveling. We lift up to you those who are ill and who will be having surgery this week. We think about the places throughout the world where war continues, where people have to flee their homes 
O oh God, give us the courage and empower us to serve you both boldly and joyfully. For it is only through your healing love, through that first love that Christ shared with us, that we can go forth, remembering that nothing will separate us from that love. So as we share the familiar prayer together, O oh God, May we hear these words anew and seek to enact them in our lives. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us stand in body and or spirit as we sing our Final hymn, My Life Flows On, the insert in your bulletin. forth with joy, celebrating all the many ways for us to serve our Lord. We ask God to give us courage, hope, peace, and love that we might share those little mustard seeds wherever we go. Go forth in peace. Amen. <laughs>